Hey there guys, today I want to share with you a hack and some useful information that you could potentially use to improve the power of your sleep for learning and creative problem solving. I was a little bit pushed for time this week, so didn't have time to film in the office as usual, and I thought, what with Oxford being home of the Dreaming Spires and of course Oxford University, this might be quite a good setting for what I'm gonna talk about today. So I've got the bulk of what I'm gonna talk about here from a TED Talk by Penny Lewis, and if you want the full context, then I highly recommend you go and check that out. I'll leave the link in the description down below. So anyone who's studied psychology will know that when we go to sleep, we go through five different stages. Stage one, two, three, four, then REM sleep. And REM sleep is of course when we dream and this is associated with creativity and problem solving but the other stages of sleep are also important you have the first stage which is your uh, light sleep and then stages three and four which are um, deep sleep and slow wave sleep and stage two which i guess is just kind of in the middle and this is where you get the sleep spindles which i'll be talking about in a moment you go through multiple um, cycles of these stages during any single night's sleep each one lasting about 90 to 110 minutes and that's why if you're going to power nap it's very important that you either wake up in your light sleep before you reach stage two and three or that you sleep for 90 minutes and do at least one complete cycle the first cycle of sleep is the most important for bodybuilders and anyone trying to build muscle because this is when you produce the most growth hormone and testosterone but the other stages of sleep are also interesting and in this talk by penny lewis she talked about how our memory seems to be consolidated during slow wave sleep and deep sleep and how this also correlates with sleep spindles in stage two. So in one study they taught participants these hand movements which involved things like this and got them to rote learn them. Then after a night's sleep they found that their ability to perform those actions quickly improved by 20%. So we already know that sleep is very important for learning anything and this shows that it also applies to learning motor movements which is something that should be of interest to anyone learning a kata from martial art or dance choreography. We already knew that, like I said though. What's more interesting is that the extent to which their ability to perform these movements improved correlated with the amount of sleep spindles that they had during their stage two sleep. These sleep spindles being um, high frequency oscillations in their brain waves in specific brain regions. And specifically, it correlated with this activity in the motor cortex, which is of course the part of the brain responsible for uh, motor movements, you know, moving your arms and legs, etc., and feeling feedback from your limbs and body parts. You might then think that sleep spindles must be responsible for that memory consolidation. But in another study, it was found that this consolidation also occurs in deep stages of sleep, stages three and four. In this study, they took computer game players and got them to uh, learn the maps of virtual environments, and then they monitored their brain activity during sleep. And during stages three and four, if they showed more activity in their hippocampus, which is a brain region that's responsible for spatial reasoning and memory, among other things, then they showed greater improvement in their ability to navigate these virtual environments. So it's not so much the sleep spindles that are important, rather it's the activation in the relevant brain areas during those sleep stages. And it might just be that looking at sleep spindles and where they occur could be a useful indicator of what reactivation will occur in which brain regions during sleep. So that's all very interesting, but what's more useful from a biohacking perspective is that you can also induce this reactivation during sleep in specific brain regions by creating associations. So if you play a certain sound whilst the learning a movement or factual information, and then you play that sound back to yourself whilst you're sleeping, then you can trigger reactivation through association in those brain regions and improve your ability to consolidate those specific memories as you're sleeping. So rather than learning something all day, going to bed and hoping that you consolidate it during the night, you can create an association by playing music or just by listening to the sounds that are related to what you're doing and then playing that back to yourself whilst you sleep. Um, and let me show you how this works. If I show you a cat in this part of the screen and a dog in this part of the screen, and then tonight when you're asleep and you enter slow wave sleep, I'm watching, and I play. Then the next day when I test you, you'll be much more likely to remember where the cat was on the screen than the dog. And that's because that sound cue will have triggered reactivation of the memory. Hacking any system means looking at the inputs and then seeing how you can use those inputs to manipulate said system. And in biohacking, it's no different. Whilst we're sleeping, we can still hear. This is, of course, how we listen out for predators. And this is why alarm clocks are effective at waking us up. 
So this is a useful way of literally hacking sleep in order to potentially improve our memory. So I don't know if people are trying this themselves and if they've had any luck, but it's certainly very interesting, something I'll be trying. And give it a go as well and let me know in the comments down below if it helps you to consolidate new information or new movement patterns more quickly. And on a related note, REM sleep, which is responsible for dreams, seems to serve the role of associative problem solving. So the reigning theory at the moment is that when we're dreaming, we're reactivating brain areas and not only consolidating those memories, but seeing how they fit to other related brain regions. So for instance, finding how something fits contextually with other information that you have and maybe how this can help you to solve a problem. And so this is why when we sleep on a problem, often we wake up with a solution. And dreams have always been a great resource for creative individuals. Many people have credited their dreams with helping them to come up with sonatas or great works of art or stories. So the problem with using dreams creatively is that we often can't remember the useful information that we come up with whilst we're sleeping. However, during stage one sleep, we go through a similar brain state called hypnagogia or a hypnagogic state. And during this time, this is when your thoughts start to become a little bit muddled. You might notice yourself thinking things that are a little bit weird. And there is a way that we can make sure that we remember and consciously become aware of these thoughts more often. The way we do this is simply by making sure that we wake up at the moment that we start drifting into that state. And the method that Salvador Dali would use to do this, to come up with his pretty weird paintings, is he would go to sleep on a couch or on a chair and he'd hold a spoon in one hand and he'd hold the spoon over a plate. And the idea was that once he started to drift off and lose consciousness, he would then drop the spoon, it would land on the plate and clatter and wake him up. And then he'd write down whatever weird stuff it was he was thinking or visualizing at that point in time thereby coming up with the crazy strange paintings that he's known for. So that's just a fun little experiment that you can use to tap into your brain's slightly more creative state whilst you're sleeping. But I mainly wanted to share that interesting information about how you could link information with sounds and then use that to reactivate brain regions and potentially improve your learning. And a similar technique could likewise potentially be used to help you come up with associative problem solving while sleeping. So if you found either of those things useful or interesting, then please leave a like down below, comment and let me know what you think, especially if you try it. Uh, let me know if you have any amazing breakthroughs or if you can more quickly learn a new motor skill. And stay tuned if you want more like this on brain training, bodybuilding, fitness, self-development, technology, working online, transhumanism, nootropics, all that usual stuff. If that sounds good, then thanks a ton for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.